Vintage Compressor Model 670. This compressor is magic. Full digital recording and mixes will get enormous benefits from the warmth and thickness this unit delivers. There are various ways you can work with this device. For example, since the modeling of the amplifier stage in this compressor is very detailed, you can experiment with various levels of input gain, compensating for more or less compression with the threshold knobs, and for a higher or lower output level with the output knob. Set the input level to minus 16 in order to get 2 to 3 dB of compression, and raise the output level to get the level you want. This will result in a very transparent compression with a bit of nice coloration, but not too much. You can also try setting the input gain at, say, minus 4 dB. The compression can then be set to get the same 2 to 3 dB of compression, and the output level can be set to match the level you need. This time, because of the higher input drive on the unit, the sound will be much more colored, with a fabulous, thick, warm character. Typical 670 Mastering Settings If this is the only compressor used in your mastering chain, you can start with a setting like the default one or very similar. This will deliver from 1 to 2.5 dB of compression with the time constant set at 5. This setting will glue all mix elements together without sounding compressed. If you want to compress more, just raise the threshold controls and compensate the average gain loss by incrementing the output level. In stereo mastering, this unit should be used linked or lat vert, but sometimes 1 to 2 dB of unlinked stereo compression can give a nice unstable touch to the stereo image that can be very pleasant. This model has its own sound when you just insert it, even without applying any compression, threshold at zero. So, you can just insert it on the audio processing chain and listen to the very interesting sonic changes that result. Mixing single tracks with the 670. This compressor character is incredibly musical on single mix tracks, so you can try it on pretty much every type of material. Vocals, guitars, bass, piano, strings, etc. With various time constants and 5 to 6 dB of compression. If you want to enhance the articulation of a vocal track, try compressing 5 dB with time constant 1. The resulting vocal won't sound as if it had been compressed, but will be more consistent and solid. Keep DC threshold controls near the minimum level when you want the most transparent and invisible compression, and move them toward maximum if you want the compressor to be more noticeable and more limiter-like. On drums, this compressor can be used to process a stereo submix with superb results, especially in lat vert mode. Here, you will be able to get the sound of the room exactly the way you want by compressing the sides independently from the center. Since the attack time is very fast, drums compressed with this compressor will never sound snappy, allowing for a compression that will sound more natural. Opto Compressor Think of this compressor as the purest analog modeled compressor in the T-Rex 3 package. When you want the sound of analog compression, but want to keep the musical's original sonic texture with the smallest amount of coloration possible, this is the right choice. You will notice that no more than a few dB of compression is allowed at low ratio values. For example, with a 2 to 1 ratio, you won't be able to compress more than 3 to 4 dB. This is normal for this device, and it's because of the optical device modeled in this compressor that it cannot attenuate more than a certain amount. If you need more compression, just raise the ratio value. This behavior is also very useful when compressing vocals, because the compressor will follow vocal dynamics while avoiding squeezing the highest passages. Vintage Program Equalizer EQ1A This is a classic. It provides colorful equalization that can give character and tonal shape with incredible musicality. This equalizer is on the opposite side, in terms of usage, of the linear phase EQ. Its tonality is not spot on, and you should think of it more as a tone controller, rather than an equalizer. Low frequency and high frequency boost and attenuation controls do not overlap, so if you dial in a low boost and attenuation, both at 5, the resulting response will not be flat. This is the typical characteristic of this device, and it's one of the reasons why it is so loved even today. The device is based on a passive EQ network followed by a makeup amplifier. The passive EQ network gives a presence and a tonal shaping power that is hard to obtain with conventional pure equalizers. For example, a very nice presence touch is given by setting the high filter like this. Bandwidth, 5. Boost, 4 to 5. High frequency, 4 to 5 kilohertz. Like the vintage compressor model 670, this model also has its own sound when you just insert it, even without applying any equalization. 
So just insert it on the chain and listen to its interesting sonic character. Linear Phase Equalizer This is a top class equalizer that can be sonically compared only to high-end digital equalizers used in mastering studios every day. It is so good that in most cases it surpasses most expensive analog high-end equalizers in terms of purity and transparency. Use this equalizer when you need to apply EQ with the least possible negative side effects and when you absolutely don't want the equalized sound effect. We suggest using the linear phase equalizer to set the effect you want to apply to your audio and then to experiment with the linear phase button to evaluate which phase response is the best for your current material. Typically, linear phase equalization is more transparent and material processed with it appears less equalized than conventional EQ, so it gives headroom for more pronounced intervention before sounding over-processed. Brick Wall Limiter The brick wall limiter processor should normally be used at the end of the chain. Its main purpose is to increase the material by a few dB, typically from 1 to 3 with the maximum possible quality. You can normally start with clean style, as this is the most neutral of all styles. If you want very high levels and more character from the limiter when using the clean style, simply lower the release time toward the very minimum. This will make the limiter work more like a clipper and fully preserve transient energy and impact, but with less drastic effects on the audio. The clean style, with very short release times, less than one millisecond, is particularly suitable for pop, rock, hip-hop, etc. Keep slightly higher release times, around 10 milliseconds, for music that does not need extremely intense levels. Longer release times, say more than 50 milliseconds, are especially useful for pumping effects that are sometimes desirable. Advanced styles use a mix between warm and smooth saturation and digital limiting. They are all punchier and more colorful than clean, and they can be effective on certain material because the actual limiting effect is less evident at the expense of some saturation.